Hirano Kagiyora volume 2 review. Hirano has been looking out for his younger roommate Kagiyora, Kaki-kun, in his high school just as a senpai is suspected to do, but he had anticipated that Kagi would fall for him. Now, he doesn't know what to do for the best. He doesn't want to hurt Kagi's feelings and spoil the easygoing relationship of two guys sharing a room in the school dorm. He's felt responsible as Kagi's senpai to make sure that the younger boy settles as well to life in high school, away from home and family for the first time, but he's done his job a little too well. As for Kagi, he's keep confiding in his long-suffering classmate Nibashi. Nibashi's become a kind of unwilling confidante. <sighs> Eventually, Nibashi asks Kagi, do you want to kiss him? And Kagi begins to realize that his crush in Hirano might be rather less platonic than he's been able to admit to himself. Even though he's still expressing it as a wish to marry Hirano because he wants to have what his own parents have, which is really rather charming of a little naive. Meanwhile, the yearly routine continues. There's a Christmas party in the dorm. Kagi's birthday then a new year. Hirano and Kagi go to the shrine together when they're tying their New Year's wishes alongside the many others in the shrine. Kagi experiences a moment of revelation. Yes, he does want to kiss Hirano. There's no going back for him now. The third term gets underway and as the school year is coming to a close, March. The end of the two sharing a room looms very large in Kagi's mind. Hirano will be entering his final year and will need time and space to study. It is what impels Kagi to ask Hirano, can I put my hand into your lap sometime? To which Hirano distractedly agrees. When an opportunity arises, Kagi reverses the request and Hirano cuts off guard. Agrees, but jokingly complains that Kagi's things are rock hard. That is Kagi's turn to be so overwhelmed by the experience that he treats. Blushing furiously, I still feel like I'm doing something wrong. No surprise, then the Kagi has difficulty sleeping and ends up in the nurse's office. But, just as it seems that his wish to stay with Hirano for another year would never work out, there's a crisis at the provision of accommodation as another boarding house used by the school as a close. Could there still be a chance for Kagi and Hirano to stay together after all? Hirano Kakiyora is all about misunderstandings and how a simple act of friendship or two can easily be misinterpreted. It means so much more. A richest friendship is Hirano deceiving himself and his, his brotherly affection for his younger roommate depending and changing into something else. Shoha Rusuno's best no manga Sasaki Yamayano explores a rather different relationship between two boys with a similar age gap at the same old boy school, Firat. Sasaki fans we still usually see Sasaki in these chapters. The joke about the first title was the BL and the description of boy's life, not boy's love, but the same can be said about Hirano Kagiyora. Poor Kakikun is well as truly smitten with his scary looking senpai, dye hair and piercing ears and all. It's lucky that Hirano is an understanding senpai, and that Nibashi Kagi's, cla Kagi's classmate has some sincere and kind advice to give just when Kagi is feeling at his most desperate. There's nothing wrong with it. He tells Kaki, love's totally not more normal. I'm running for for you. However, Shoha Rasuna shows us how difficult the path that Hirano is forced to negotiate when Kaki Kun tells him straight out that he likes him and he tries to tell him back so that he can reciprocate his feelings. Kill the information. Infamous, yet undeniably cute. Kaki Kun put the Kangaka has a gift for showing myriad different feelings her characters, expressions, and body language. So this might be a slight quote volume, but there's a lot of pack in the short but intense chapters. There's also a little gentle humor, so it's not all pinning and angst, especially when Hanzawa, the second year dorm Ari with an inscrutable smile, is around. There's a side story pictures featuring Hanzawa and a bun is touching his ears, which is where Kage asks if he can put in the earrings he gave Hirano as a birthday gift in Hirano's ears, not his own, that is. Yep, there's absolutely no sexual undertones there. Absolutely not, no way. There's also chapter 10.5, which follows the final chapter of this volume, but it's only two pages in length. Lincoln Harvey is continued, he continues to deliver a good translation for Shoharasuno's manga for Yen Press and the lettering, covering everything from phone conversations to innermost thoughts. He's expertly done by Winster. There are translation notes and afterwear for the mangaka, and two unused sketches for the cover art. Volume 3 is due out in July. The series has correlated up to four volumes in Japan. As with the mangaka's other volumes, the other art displays her striking use of colors with the glows, as do four po color pages inside. Another bonus with this attractive series, even during the TV anime series only give us the previous of glimpses of Kaki Kun. There's a short anime connected to the latest anime film, Sasaki Miyano Graduation, which is based on volume 7, which it will be available via Crunchyroll later this year. Nothing is resolved at the end of this volume, and there just seem to be even more obstacles put in Kagi Kun's way. 
As of Hirano, Hanzo and Sasaki have final exams in their future is to worry about as they move into the third year. This beautifully adorable spin-off series continues to prove itself both an amusing yet touching look at everyday life in an old boys high school, 9 out of 10.